OpenAI's latest investment round has apparently ballooned to a new high valuation as well as a significant $250 million minimum investment. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. For a while now, we have been following the story of OpenAI's latest round. For some time, it wasn't exactly clear whether this was just an employee tender offer or a more significant raise, but that has become clear now. It is definitely a more significant raise. And the dynamics of it show that whatever concerns people may have had around AI hype getting too far ahead in the summer and OpenAI starting to surrender its lead to competitors, the latest O1 model and its other activities seem to have answered those entirely, as we will see. So first of all, the latest funding round seems set to value OpenAI at around $150 billion. That's obviously a significant increase from the $80 to $90 billion of the last round. The size of the total round has also increased. We had previously heard that Thrive Capital was leading the round, but now it appears that the total financing will be somewhere between five and seven billion dollars, led by Thrive, which is committing a billion. Microsoft, Nvidia, and Apple are all looking to invest. The total aggregate contribution from which should be between two and three billion. One big question is what's the combination of cash and other resources like computing power that's going into that? And then a couple of other likely investors named are Tiger Global Management, as well as MGX, which is an Abu Dhabi-based AI firm. In the case of Tiger, it appears that they're doing this through a special purpose vehicle, which will aggregate other investors into a single investment, which as the information puts it, could help investors make good on their commitments without overweighting their main funds in OpenAI shares. Now, one of the new details is an apparent quarter billion dollar minimum investment. For some context on that, according to PitchBook, $250 million is six times larger than the median venture fund raised in the US last year. VC Matt Turk framed it this way. In a tweet, he wrote, 250 million in venture capital over the years. 1990s, entire assets under management of a firm across funds. 2010s, total size of a Series A fund, 30 plus companies. 2020 to 2021, total size of one round in one late stage company. 2024, size of each participant's investment in one round of one company. Now, what we get from Bloomberg is that even if you do have a quarter billion dollars to spend in this, you're not guaranteed to get into the round. Bloomberg writes that investors were set to find out today whether they'd actually get into the deal. One of their sources said that excess demand was in the billions of dollars. So if the number does come in at around $6.5 billion, that means there was potentially billions of dollars more that were left on the table. Bloomberg also did note that there was one notable participant who won't be investing, which is Sequoia. Bloomberg frames it potentially as a choice to focus on rival company Safe Super Intelligence, which was of course founded by OpenAI co-founder Ilya Sutskiver, who left the company earlier this year. Maybe also this is Sequoia making good on their concerns that they expressed in the $600 billion challenge blog post from over the summer. The Financial Times put the logic of all this into very simple terms. Venture groups, they write, believe OpenAI will eventually be the world's dominant AI company and worth trillions of dollars. Ultimately, this is really all handicapping the odds that OpenAI wins, which really means OpenAI continues to lead in a market that they believe is going to be worth trillions of dollars. In that light, $150 billion starts to look, if not reasonable, at least a lot less insane. The Financial Times added that it appears that Andreessen Horowitz is also sitting out of the round. One of the investors that the Financial Times spoke with said that generative AI represented the biggest platform prize since cloud or the internet, worth multiple trillions of dollars of economic value. Another interesting note from anonymous investors in this conversation has to do with the introduction of Apple as an investor. FT writes, more important still could be closer ties to strategic investors. Said one investor in OpenAI, OpenAI have Microsoft, the biggest enterprise company on the planet. If I could pick another partner, it would be Apple, the biggest consumer company on the planet. I'm walking into a gunfight with Google and Facebook and I have Microsoft and Apple behind me. It's not such a bad thing from a distribution and branding perspective. Now I'm sure we will get more information soon as that round finalizes. But in the meantime, there was also an interesting conversation between Sam Altman and leaders at T-Mobile at an event yesterday where Altman used the recently introduced framework of levels to explain that O1 does represent their level two, and that while the shift to level two took time, he thinks that that means that level three will be coming faster. We have these five levels of AI we talk about. Uh, the first was chatbots. The second, which we've just reached now, is reasoners. Uh, the third is agents. The fourth is sort of innovators, the ability to figure out new scientific information. And the fifth is full organizations. Um, so this move from one to two took a while, but I think the most exciting, one of the most exciting things about two is that it enables level three relatively quickly after. And the agentic experiences that we expect this technology to eventually enable, I think will be quite
quite impactful. The information recently explored this in somewhat more detail, writing, One of the most important applications of Strawberry, which is of course now called O1, is to generate high-quality training data for Orion, OpenAI's next flagship large language model that's in development. Using Strawberry or O1 could help Orion reduce the number of hallucinations or error it produces, researchers tell me. That's because AI models learn from their training data, so the more correct examples of complex reasoning they see, the better. Amir from the information also pointed out an Altman Easter egg around Orion from September 13th. I love being home in the Midwest. The night sky is so beautiful. Excited for the winter constellations to rise soon. They are so great. When you ask ChatGPT what constellations he might be referring to, it says he is likely referring to prominent constellations that are visible during the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere. The first one it listed is, of course, Orion. Since we're on the topic, a couple additional pieces of OpenAI news to round it out. The miniature version of OpenAI's new reasoning model is, as the week has gone on, getting more and more people excited. Amir Afradi from The Information Again writes, OpenAI's week of good news keeps getting better. After releasing an initial version of its O1 reasoning model, O1 Preview, new details are emerging about a smaller but faster version of the model O1 Mini. Turns out that O1 Mini is even better than O1 Preview in math, according to developers. It is generally on par in most other ways. One reason they write for O1 Mini's relatively mighty performance is that OpenAI allows customers to use more tokens, compared to O1 Preview. O1 Mini's smaller size means it processes information more efficiently and more cheaply. Because of that, OpenAI can let O1 Mini think longer than O1 Preview, and that can help prove what the company says is the best part of its reasoning models. More thinking time equals better answers, otherwise known as log linear compute scaling. The efficiency gains OpenAI got from developing a miniature form of a reasoning model appear to be just as big of an accomplishment as proving out that reasoning concept. Lastly today, congrats to friend of the show, Leah Belsky, a former Coursera executive who I met years ago in my first stint with Learn Capital, who has just been recruited and hired by OpenAI to be their first general manager of education and lead their efforts to bring ChatGPT into schools and classrooms. I, for one, am definitely on the optimistic side about how AI can help education, and so I love that there is going to be more focus there. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.